What's going on everyone? We're having a party in the garden today. Hope you guys are going to join us. We're talking about fungus and I'm a pretty fun guy. So let's go. So we get asked a lot of times from gardeners if mushrooms in the garden are a bad thing, what causes them and what can you do about them? And so in today's episode, we're gonna go through just a few different mushrooms that you're probably gonna see at some point in your garden, why you're seeing them and what you can do about it if you do see them. So in the garden, you're gonna encounter lots of different mushrooms. Mushrooms can take on many different forms. Some are good and some are bad, but mushrooms are not always the toadstool looking mushrooms that you see in the grocery store or in movies where there's a little frog hiding underneath them. And Mushrooms take on so many different forms, some you don't even see. In fact, there's mushrooms that, believe it or not, live underneath the soil that you will never see, that never see the light of day, because they actually colonize plant roots. Now, mushrooms cannot photosynthesize like plants, and so they need a food source. Sometimes that food source is punky wood, other times it's a living plant, and they actually use the sugars that the plant creates to actually keep it alive because it can't photosynthesize. So in a way, mushrooms are technically parasites. They need a host to actually provide that food source for them because they have no way of, uh, of actually creating energy through photosynthesis. And so while some are beneath the soil, some do actually pop up in the form of a mushroom cap like what we see. And those are known as blooms. Now beneath the soil, there's a whole network of what is called hyphae. Because mus mushrooms are not plants, they do not have roots, these are actually networks of fungi that actually colonize an area. It could be wood chips or a tree or anything like that. And they actually colonize. And when the mushroom is ready to spawn, it actually will form sometimes a cap. And that cap has gills, which contain millions of spores that can be spread via the wind. And that's the only way that it transports its essentially pollen because Again, mushrooms are not plants. They do not create pollen. They create spores, which are basically these little, uh, these little mini mushrooms that when spread and find a place that is hospitable, they will land and colonize. And that will spread the hyphae, and the hyphae will then be able to colonize that area. And then when it's ready to spawn again, it forms another mushroom. So the mushroom itself is actually just basically the tip of the iceberg of the overall mushroom that lives beneath the soil. So these, these are ink cap mushrooms. They're very common in the garden. Now, the season for mushrooms is pretty wide. You can have mushrooms anywhere from early spring all the way to late fall. Mushrooms love the cool, damp weather of spring and fall, but even in summer, if you get some cool nights and a lot of rain, it can bring on a mushroom bloom. Now, these ink cap mushrooms, like I said, are very common. They're probably the most common mushrooms you're gonna encounter in the garden. They love wood chips like this. These punky wood chips hold on to moisture and provide a wonderful environment for that hyphae to spread and colonize. Now, the blooms of the mushroom can be identified by basically uh, an open, they call it a, a cap, with gills. And as the mushroom gets older, uh, the mushroom will actually turn black like ink. Now, these mushrooms do not eat mushrooms unless you can completely identify them, are considered edible if you, can, if you consume any alcohol at all, it'll actually become fatal. So I do not recommend eating anything in the garden unless you know it's 100% safe and you, know to and you know how to identify it. So these, I would not recommend eating, but these are ink cap mushrooms and are very common in the garden. All right, now here, just next to the ink caps is another wonderful example of a very common garden fungus. This is known as dog vomit mushroom. Now, a lot of people get fearful over this one because of the fact it looks really gnarly. And honestly, it does. It is crazy looking. It does look a lot like a dog had an upset stomach and threw up on the soil. This is more of a crawling mushroom. It does have spores. All mushrooms have spores, but this one, when it blooms, it actually has a tendency to kind of crawl and grow on the soil surface. Now, it also loves the punky wood chips of the garden in our walkways. And so this is another wonderful example of a mushroom that you're probably gonna see at some point in your garden. This is another one. I don't know if it's edible or not. I wouldn't recommend eating it. I would definitely recommend doing your research. I would venture to say no, it's probably gonna be something that's gonna make you very sick. But in the big scope of things, it's not about necessarily finding mushrooms that are edible, but more or less knowing the mushrooms that you have 
and knowing what they mean if they're in your garden. All right, you guys, this is incredible. This is such a wonderful example of what is called the mouth of the forest. Now, the mouth of the forest is not a specific type of mushroom. It's in fact the hyphae from a mushroom. Now, I cannot identify what type of mushroom this will be because it's just the hyphae. It's the equivalent of having like mold growing on cheese essentially in your in your fridge or mold growing on bread it's just the hyphae it hasn't bloomed yet and this right here if i pull this up oh oh wow check that out this is such a wonderful wonderful example i had no idea it was going to be so developed like that there's even more that's spreading you can see how it kind of glues the wood chips together the glue you see these little bits and pieces the glue that's holding those wood chips together is the hyphae. It's the network of fungi. And this is incredible. I don't know what this is going to become. It could become something like uh, like a slime mold. It could be something like a dog vomit. It could also be just a network of ink cap. Who knows? But this is incredible. And the reason why they call this the mouth of the forest is because that fungi actually account for over 80% of decomposition. We always talk about beneficial insects like worms, right? Worms actually don't do that much decomposition in comparison to fungi. Now, I'm gonna keep it nice and uh, cool like this and dark by making sure that I don't have it face up. If you leave it face up, it'll actually die. Mushrooms do not like being exposed to sunlight. In fact, sunlight will kill them. So I'm keeping them nice and dark and covered so they can continue to colonize because having good fungus in the garden, having a good fungal presence, and having a very fungal dom uh, fungally dominated soil is wonderful for plant health. All right, Taylor, so I know we had quite a bit of mushrooms here. I wanna go check out the orchard because I don't know if there's gonna be mushrooms or not, but if there is, I definitely want to showcase some of them. So generally, you're gonna find mushrooms. There's sometimes mushrooms that form uh, in amongst trees and stuff like this. And if there are, there would be mushrooms forming. I'm not seeing any. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Here's a good one. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, this is an awesome one. So I don't know what these are necessarily called. I don't have a, an identification for these. Oh, there's another one. Check this out, look at this. So this is a super cool, I'm really glad this happened because uh, these mushrooms, um, when they're there, they generally will form, especially near trees that are living, they'll form in kind of uh, communities. And so underneath the soil is the network of hyphae, right? And when they, when they actually bloom, they bloom in a lot of different areas. So once you find an area, it's like once you find one, you're typically gonna find another. And that's the case with, with this one here. So this, I don't know exactly what type of mushroom this is. However, we have a tip here that'll help identify some of these mushrooms. And if you go to your, if you go to Google and do a Google search, what you can do is you can Google image search using Google Lens, not a sponsor. And you can actually come up here and you can typically find what mushroom it is. And in fact, this is the one right here. So this is the mushroom. This looks almost identical to this. It's the zero, zero camellus chrysanterian. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's formerly known as Boletus chrysanterian or Xerocomus chrysanterian. It's a small edible wild mushroom. And again, make sure I'm not gonna be held accountable if you decide to eat this mushroom. I personally would not eat this mushroom because I am not very uh, well-versed in you know, um, mycology and, and foraging, something I would like to work on. But again, it's the idea that these are beneficial. These are a very good sign of good fungally dominated soil. And check this out, look at this, this is beautiful. These have such a crazy, crazy gill structure. And oh my gosh, that is wild. I don't think I'd ever have the nerve to eat that. It looks pretty wicked. But that right there is another example of you know, a, a community of mushrooms growing underneath living trees as their host. Super, super cool. All right, so now that we have those wonderful examples, that was really fun going out and finding those. Um, I wanna talk about a couple more that you're gonna find in the garden probably at some point. Things like turkey tail, which happens to be an edible mushroom that's usually gonna be formed on the side of like, like rotting wood, right? So the wood on your raised beds, if it's untreated, 
you're typically gonna find at some point turkey tail. That's actually an edible mushroom. Make sure you know how to identify it. Puffball. Puffballs form in yards as well as in the garden. They're huge basketball sized mushrooms that are actually edible, believe it or not. Make sure you know how to properly identify them before you eat them. Um, and then also things like oyster mushrooms. Those are also edible. Yellow and blue oyster mushrooms are very delicious, but always err on the side of the fact that it could be poisonous and it could kill you or really harm you if you don't know how to, how to properly identify it. So myself, I always err on the side of this could be poisonous. And unless I'm with someone that knows what they're talking about and is well-versed in mycology and foraging, or I get them from uh, someone at the grocery store or the farmer's market, I do not eat mushrooms because they can be, uh, there can be a lot of lookalikes. So I just wanna let you guys know that because again, this is not about necessarily showing edible mushrooms, it's showcasing why mushrooms form in the garden and what they could do for your garden. So what actually happens if you do get mushrooms in your garden? Are they all that good or are they bad? And I wanna break this thought down into two different camps because mushrooms, like I said, can be good and can be bad. Now, the first idea is that mushrooms are known as an indicator species. An indicator species is what biologists kind of look to for showing good ecology, healthy ecology. I'll give you an example. For instance, trout and frogs are an indicator species in things like lakes and streams because they only survive in high quality environments. If the quality is very low, they will not survive. Mushrooms are an indicator species in good quality soil that has lots of organic material, which is what we look for in the garden is lots of organic material. So mushrooms can be a good indicator species for things like good growing conditions, right? Your plants love soil that is high in organic matter and mushrooms love soils that are high in organic matter as well. So if you see mushrooms, you can say to yourself, I have good quality soil. But believe it or not, mushrooms can also be a bad indicator species for things like poor growing conditions. Now in early spring or in late fall, mushrooms are gonna be prevalent and you're probably gonna find them in your garden or especially in your walkways where you have lots of you know, wood chip mulch and organic material. But if you're in the middle of summer, like we are, and you're starting to see mushrooms pop up in your garden and you haven't had a lot of rain and you're watering very frequently, it should be an indicator to you that maybe you're overwatering because mushrooms like lots of moisture as well as organic material. So you could say to yourself, my soil is good because I have mushrooms, but I'm overwatering, which could be a bad thing. Overwatering leads to uh, problems like uh, damping off, root rot, powdery mildew, blights, tons of different problems can occur from overwatering. And if you're overwatering, it's very simple to just dial that back. So in a way we can use a bad indicator species or an indicator that shows bad environmental conditions to train us to do the right things in our garden, which can be a positive. But then also if you see it and it's just raining a lot or it's really cloudy, it's very cool and very damp, think like Pacific Northwest um, type growing conditions, that is just something you have to just live with. And so in that case, that is an indicator that some plants may not do as well as others, and you could actually adapt your garden to growing plants that do better in conditions that are a little more favorable to those cooler, more damp growing conditions. And so in that, mushrooms can be both a good thing and a bad thing. We just have to understand kind of what they mean when we see them. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I know that I've not seen uh, very many content creators talk about mushrooms in the garden and what they mean. So it would really mean a lot if you'd share this video around, help spread this information because I do think that mushrooms get a bad rap. I think that a lot of people hate on them because they think mushrooms equal bad. But in fact, mushrooms equal very, very good things as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully I'll learn something new. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, do that. We got lots more gardening content coming out and we'll see you all on the next episode. Curl bigger guys. Take care. Bye.